morning. Well, today I have a message from Our Lady. That's quite a sad message in a way because it starts off with Our Lady very, very sorrowful. My children, with such great sorrow, I speak to you today. Just as the days are getting shorter and darker, so too is your world. The world has become so dark, my children, that many no longer know what the light is. Consider a man who is blind from birth. He has never seen the light of day. He only knows darkness. My children, for so many of you all over the world, this is what it is like. Many, especially many young people, are born into the darkness of your world without mention of God or understanding of sin. These young people are greatly to be pitied, my children, and yet they too have eternal souls in need of saving. My little ones, you must pray and offer all your sufferings to God for the conversion of souls, and that way you will console my aching heart. It's not easy when we hear of Our Lady having an aching heart because in the human realm, if someone said, I have an aching heart or I have an aching migraine or something, we always are trying to fix it. And so the same with Our Lady, of course, we want to try to fix it. And the reality is that we can console her and we can help her. But it's actually beyond our ability to be able to fix it because the reason that Our Lady's heart is aching is because of a worldwide problem. It's not just a little thing. And so Our Lady puts it very well. Here in London, for example, it's autumn. So already we can feel in the evening times, the days, the days are getting shorter, it's getting colder. Evening time is getting darker. All the schools are back, all these type of things. And she, can, she says that the world has become so dark and that as the days are getting shorter, so spiritually, so to speak, our, is our world getting darker as well. And then she says, you know, like a blind person, a blind person, some people, of course, um, went blind. So they maybe were able to see up to age 20 and then they go blind. And those people, they remember what it's like to be able to see. They could say, I want to be able to see again. I really miss being able to see this and to see that because they know that the light exists. But she's saying that for some people, they were born blind. From day one, they were born blind. They got used to it, so to speak. They don't know what it's like to be able to see. So they can't obviously crave for it in a kind of a way, in the same way, from experience. And so our lady is saying the same thing. Children, for example, nowadays that are born into today's world, they're born into a world where there's no mention of God, where sin is normal, so to speak, everything on the television. There's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as um, any sort of a responsibility when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to anything. Just be a good person, everything goes, sort of thing. And what Our Lady is saying is these children, when they're born into that, they're, it's like being born blind. And of course, not everywhere. I used to live in France and there were many youth groups in France and prayer groups in France and groups like Youth 2000. And we know in Medjugorje as well, there's things like Franciscan Youth and Jesus Youth. And of course, not everywhere, but a lot of places, there's just an absence, an absence. And so Our Lady says that these children are to be pitied because... They too have a soul in need of saving and what's going to become of them? And they're missing out, basically. Not only they're missing out, but then they're going to go down that path of sin, really, of destruction. And of course, God is very merciful because God, you know, sees in a person's life. He always sees a person's childhood. He always sees a person's background. He sees social factors and all sorts of stuff. So God's mercy is obviously abundant. That's not the issue. But the issue is that these people are missing out in holiness and unknowingly contributing even more to the darkness of the world. And so Our Lady, she says to me, or to us, what must we do? We must pray and offer our sufferings to God for the conversion of souls. And it's true, you know, we could go out in the streets tomorrow and tell everybody, Our Lady's heart is aching, um, console her, love her. People won't listen. A few people that are interested in prayer will listen. And the rest of the people, people don't listen. And so Our Lady is saying basically to console our heart through our prayers, through our sufferings. And that's why, of course, Medjugorje is such an important place. Because when we meet other people from places who go to Medjugorje, 
it fills us as well with the same hope and we realise that we're not alone, that there are other people as well that Our Lady is calling and that there are other people aware of the great need in today's world for prayer. So today being Friday, Friday being the day of the Passion, let us offer our day, we obviously do a morning offering anyway, but let us offer our day to Our Lady, um, offer our sufferings, offer our trials, offer our tribulations, and especially for souls. And we mightn't be able to save thousands and millions of souls, but just be able to save one or two souls, or to influence one or two souls. And so let us not get discouraged. Yes, there is a big picture, and the big picture can be very discouraging, but like they say when it comes to the environment, they say um, think globally, act locally. And sometimes we have to do the same thing with prayer. We have to pray globally, so to speak, for the world. But then we have to act locally and basically maybe get as involved as we can in our little local parish to try to help bring souls, maybe young people or whatever, to Jesus um, through whatever means possible, through prayer or to be involved in um, youth groups or, or whatever. So let us do our best in any case to offer our hearts to Our Lady so that our hearts can become hearts of consolation for the aching heart of Our Lady today. Thanks for watching.